it's uh, very simple. It's just a uh, Himalayan fine pink salt, and it's what I drink if I have to, you know, eliminate some waste that I feel I might have uh, messed up if I wasn't strictly on the fruits. Maybe somebody invited me out to dinner. I ate some vegetables that might have constricted me a little bit or constipated me. Saltwater flush is what I'll do. I'll make it really fast. Drink it, eliminate the waste, go back to eating fruits. Okay. Anthony, when you cleanse first time, did you use an enema? Did you use enemas? No, no. 2004 originally was just saltwater flush, to be honest with you. Saltwater flush. So can saltwater flush replace enemas? Hmm. I don't know. I, it's just different, but I, I prefer them now. Yeah. So, okay, so how do, how do you do a saltwater flush? I guess it depends on your health, to be honest with you. Um, how do I do saltwater flush? This is pink, fine pink Himalayan salt, and you can buy this at your health food store, or you can order it online. Um, this is, I bought this in Hawaii. It's much less expensive there than here for some reason. And what I, what I do is I simply you know, make sure that it is what it is. You know, it's pink, fine salt. It's not sea salt. There's a difference between sea salt and Himalayan salt. That's Why do you use mountain salt, Himalayan salt? Why not sea salt? Seas are very polluted right now, incredibly polluted, and we continue polluting them. And so, and I also noticed the effect it has on me. Besides the pollution idea, or the fact that it is being polluted, I also noticed that when I have the Himalayan salt, it's more of a soothing and mild feeling I have, and the results are much faster, and um, just something I favor. And everyone can try different things, mm -hmm. I know, by all means. So, so basically, sea salt has a lot of mercury and all sorts of stuff inside nowadays, stuff right? Stuff I don't even know, yeah. Petroleum. It's poison, yeah, petroleum is nasty. So mm -hmm. Himalayan salt very simple. Mm -hmm. That's very much more clean. pure. Yeah, okay. very clean. And what? Cis and the Himalayan salt has a lot of minerals, right? A lot of minerals, a lot of trace minerals that you know that could be required by the human body. I'm not sure, but I do know that when I consume it in the water, it the effect is, is like almost magnetic and it's very fast. I can drink the salt water flush maybe about one, one and a half of these, and I'll go to the bathroom, eliminate all the waste that's backing me up, things that are causing me gas, things that if I've consumed. If I cheated and I had some nuts or avocado, I'll have a pimple here and there. So it'll prevent all those things that are causing the constipation, the obstruction, by having the Himalayan salt. So what I do is uh, normally would like a, a tablespoon measure. It's a little easier to do that. And so it's one tablespoon to one quart or one liter of water. A quart and a liter are very similar in size. And so what I do is for now, I've got a little bit of salt in there already. And I'll show you. I put some salt on a spoon just like this. And I'm going to put it right in there. And I don't need to stir it. What I do is I shake it up with the, with the top. I put the top on the mason jar. I like using mason jars because it's easy to measure devices with it. It's, a, it's an easy measuring device, excuse me. And I just shake it up. You can see some of the salt. You want to make sure when you look at the, the water itself that you don't have such an accumulation of, a, of you know, salt crystals in there. Um, so you want to make sure that they're diluted, right? Diluted as best you can. And of course, you're going to have some a little bit of crystals. It's okay. A little bit it's okay. And now, the reason why I have a lemon over here is the lemon is, is important for those of you that might have a gagging reflex, or if you have a child or someone that, you know, have an obstruction, you know, yeah, you can have somebody who, who may have a, a difference of opinion for the elderly, for children, for certain things, but I can tell you right now, oftentimes the, the pain is being caused by the pressure, the pressure being caused by the constipation. Release the constipation, the obstruction, and when you can release that, your body can start healing a little better and release that stuff out there. Mm -hmm. So the lemon, I'd cut a lemon, I'd squeeze it into the salt water, and I'd drink it. So now it tastes just almost for like salt flavor. Person. Just for flavor. That's it. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's another. I'm sure there's an effect of lemon and salt. Mm -hmm. But uh, but now after I, I shake it up a little bit, I just open it up. And now the most important thing that I've learned with this is like salt water. Um, the most important thing I can tell you with the salt water is I want to drink. I want to drink until I have to go to the bathroom. Uh, the biggest problem I learned is drinking much less of it. And then I have, oh, I'm bloated or it's not eliminating or I inflame, I feel sick. Um, you felt sick when you did that because you didn't drink the whole thing. So you got to drink at least two liters at first. I've drank almost, um, almost a whole gallon, so four quarts of this when I first started. So what had happened is the first time I did it, it was an immense amount of water at first. And then the, every day I did it, I did it for seven days, I would use less water, less water, and less water until finally only about a half a quart of salt water was flushing my body out because a lot, I was a lot cleaner. I had less obstructions. So think about it. The amount of pressure you need to build up and salt water is much greater the first time. And the first elimination of your, of your bowel movements is night and day compared to an enema or any other function you may have. So by doing the whole quarts or two quarts of a salt water flush, 
you're going to see a lot more waste come out of you all at once. And this is stuff that's been inside you for God knows how long, for much longer than a day. And once it flushes out, you're going to feel a release, a relief. And then what I recommend, because um, not just the amount is important, but the, also the amount of time you drink it in. That's very important. So don't, don't spend all day drinking salt water. You want to drink it within an hour, within 30 minutes or an hour. You know, I'm saying drink. Drink, 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 drink until you have to go to the bathroom. That's the answer. No special exercises. Just drink until you got to go to the so bathroom. Basically, so basically, the idea is that you, you drink a large amount of liquid, this much or more. More, yeah. Yes? Yeah. And basically, it goes down from your mouth and then it takes you to the bathroom. Yes. Now, now a warning, um, because I've already experienced this with some people that use this as a cheating device. They'll believe they can eat whatever poisonous, nasty stuff, pizzas, burgers, um, ice cream, whatever. But it's okay, I'm gonna do an enema. It's okay, I'm gonna do a saltwater flush. No, because, and it's not even an ethical or moral thing. It's just what happens is when you eliminate so much waste, it's like peeling a bandaid off a, a fresh wound. Your intestines are so sensitive now that when you do put that poison into your body now, it's gonna cause even greater harm to you, period. You know, end of story. So if you were to do a saltwater flush, it's not meant as a quick release, a quick, you know, exit plan, escape strategy. It's used as a transition to go into more, um, into high carb raw fruit. You know, specifically for me, exclusive mm -hmm. fruit diet, uh, maybe some vegetables here and there, that's fine. Raw, everything raw and vegetables. Um, I could cook some fruits if I wanted that, but I'm, I'm happy with raw fruits. So this is a transitionary device. It's not an escape plan. It's not a healing device. It just helps eliminate making room flushing out and cleaning. So imagine this as being your your detergent while you clean the sink. You know, you're cleaning dishes in the sink. This is the detergent I use to clean my, my dishes, my, my cup inside my stomach, let's say. Um, the way easiest way to describe it. And when I clean it, now I can make more space for fresh fruits. Right, and fruit, fresh fruit is very gentle on the, on the intestine. Exactly, and that's the goal. You don't want to be doing this. This isn't something you want to do for the rest of your life. You want to do more fruits and more water. Eventually, that's another thing. After I drink, let's be two or three uh, quarts of this, or I haven't gotten them released, I'll start drinking water. Mm -hmm. Fresh water, yes. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that the sea salt. Uh, the, uh, you mentioned that the salty water here, Himalayan salt and water, the, uh, the salt water flush is like a detergent. Yes. Yeah. Well, before when we talked, you said that. When you were in Navy, oh, yeah, you yeah. would wash... Um, the, the mops. We, we have our mops and they were so filthy, black and gross. We on the them. ship, yeah? Oh yeah, grease. You, you name, we use the mops for everything. It was the most disgusting mops ever. And then I was really new in the Navy. They told me, hey, why don't you tie the mops to a rope and put them on the side of the ship while it's going through the salt water, the ocean. And I thought, that's crazy. That's stupid. What's that going to do? Well, we did that. Shortly after that, we pulled the mops up. They were, they were white, they were bleached white. I've never seen cleaner mops in my life. They were cleaner than when we bought them. So right there, it taught me that salt water, the ocean and so forth, salt water has such an amazing cleaning effect that to deny that it is almost ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So how can you compare um, salt water flash to, to coffee enemas? What do coffee enemas do and what does salt water flash do? From my understanding, the coffee enema is affecting the liver, the hemorrhoidal portal system. So it's specifically meant to target the glutathione as transferase of your liver and affecting the liver. So it helps detoxify the liver, assist in the liver as, um, as you're detoxifying with the Gerson therapy and other protocol. And this is not something I would recommend. I would not recommend Himalayan saltwater flush while doing the Gerson protocol or any protocol similar to that that's very dependent on potassium and sodium exchange. This is something that I would recommend someone who is, is typically a healthier person um, in respect to not having some, some chronic degenerative diseases, but maybe um, maybe they're just backed up, they're constipated and so forth. That's where I would go. So a gentler way, at first, my experience, I was over 210 pounds, did the master cleanse as part of it, that's fine. But if I were really degenerate, if I was terminally ill with some cancer or something, I wouldn't recommend it. I would go gentle, which is the warm water enemas. And then if you can do the coffee enemas, do coffee enemas and so forth and in introduce raw fruits, vegetables, because that's the problem. We do flushes and do excess, um, salt water flushes and enemas and so forth, but we don't replace the space with anything good. We don't replace place with the worst thing. So you want to immediately start drinking juices, or in my case, I just eat fresh fruits. So that's the biggest thing with the coffee enemas. You want to at least drink th uh, three glasses to one enema, three glasses of fresh carrot apple juice to one enema. That's, that's the mm -hmm. protocol, general guidelines. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, super. Thank you so much. Um, the saltwater flush, I recommend that early in the morning, as soon as you get up. Um, I like to do a little exercise, even when I get up here, I'll do a little light push-ups, uh, sit-ups, crunches, a few minutes, not very long. And in that moment, I think about being grateful. And after I think about being grateful, I make a space within myself. And when I make that space, I make a space for abundance. And from that point on, I can add more gratitude to my life. And what I do is I do a saltwater flush. When I'm doing a saltwater flush, as I'm doing now, you know, instead of thinking about the saltiness taste and the stuff that, you know, this is something that appeals to me, it doesn't attract me. I only do it for a certain amount of time. But what I do is I'm, I'm cleaning a space within myself. So that way when I consume foods and, you know, fruits, when I say the word food, I, I really mean to say it's fruits. That's, that's the only food for me. Um, bananas, I, mean, I was just laughing with the Vita earlier because I did get a little gassy and I realized that I was eating denser foods just recently, which is bananas. Um, bananas are great, but at the level I'm at right now, I am I like to have more watery fruits. But what's wonderful is sometimes I make a mistake, and my way of looking at it is success is only created through the mistakes. That's what I've seen. And success in becoming a transitionary to, uh, to fruitarian or frugivore is stumbling plenty of times with either nuts, seeds, avocados, different foods that you wouldn't normally eat, sprouts even. And now where I'm at, I need watery fruits when I do consume anything. So the saltwater flush helps make space. So now that I've done this early in the morning, as soon as I got up, um, I have space throughout the whole day. I'm not worried about obstructions and constipation and everything else because I feel free. And now, no matter how many fruits I eat, typically I'll go to the bathroom within 30 minutes after eating fruits. All right, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> Bye. Oh.